YouTube. It's me again. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own recumbent bike. And I'm going to base it on my King Cycle. We're going to be using 40 millimeter by 20 millimeter steel box section, 1.5 millimeter wall thickness, and we're going to be making a twin spar frame <coughs> like this, which is basically two lengths that go all the way to the bottom bracket. This is a King Cycle from the 90s, early 90s. Um, it's an amazing bike. It's light as a feather, comfy, brilliant. One of the best recumbents I ever owned. Um, the reason I'm building this new one is because I've got a lot of spare parts left over from old builds and I want to use them up really. They're too good to throw away so I thought I'd make another bike. And it's locked down again so give me something to do. Right, this morning I picked up this pretty much free kids bike here. It's 24 inch wheel. I wanted a 20 inch wheel really but this one came up. Trouble with 20 inch wheel bikes, kids bikes, is that a lot of them have got a solid bottom bracket which is not what I want. This has got the proper square taper. So I use this, I'll make a 26 inch rear and 24 inch front version. If I think that isn't what I want, I'll slice the fork down, cut it, shorten it, make it 20 inch, it's not a problem. For the rear wheel, I'm gonna be using this here, Shimano Nexus hub gear. 8 speed if I remember right. I've used it on a few other bikes. It's brilliant. And the reason it's brilliant is no derailleur. Just one cable to the twist grip. And yes, yeah, 8 speed it says there. And you can pull up at a traffic light in 8th gear unable to pull away just twist it forward you don't have to move it'll be in first gear or second gear so that's easy so that's the rear wheel I use the front end of this I need the wheel and the fork and this part here the steering tube I'll cut that out grind it grind all the paint off I can use that and I need the bottom bracket and the bottom bracket shell. That's about it. I might use the brakes if they're any good. I think they're a bit plastic though, so probably not. Not the strongest. Yeah, I use the quill stem. I'll try and make an extended steerer like that one. And I've got an old seat which I've had for years an old recumbent seat which has been on like three or four different bikes now so I might as well use that look at it it's been in my garage for ages <clears throat> bit of a hoarder don't like throwing things away yeah that'll be the seat that's the back wheel bits of this bits of that twin spar frame V brakes and I'll show you how we build it. I'll show you the build process. And uh, yeah, should be good, hopefully. I'll teach you about the angle of the forks and uh, rake and trail. I'll probably make my own little idler. First thing to do is start slicing this one up. Strip it down as much as I need to start slicing it up and grinding uh, I won't throw everything away at the moment because bits like this can be used for supports rear supports for the seat and things you know you save it until the end and then take it up the tip and throw it away
that's the bit we want. That's your bottom bracket done. <clears throat> nice and smooth, ready for re-welding. And I've marked the drive side because it's easy to weld it in the wrong way around. <laughs> drive, 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 drive. Take the quill stem out. <clears throat> we'll need that later. Strip down the forks. Not too bad, plenty of grease. All right, I can reuse those. Let's have a look at this bottom one. Yep. Give those a clean. Reuse those. Now, I've got to grind this off. I should take these caps off really, but I'll give them a tap and see if they come out. If they don't, I'll just be careful. Yep. That was easy enough. The bearing cups came out. Give them a tap with a bit of a drift. They came out, so my life is now a lot easier. And you don't really want to be welding with these in anyway. So yeah, start grinding this now. There you go. your steering tube ground off all the bits ground off I finished it up on my uh, bench sander so it's nice right it's time to cut the rails I've just measured the king cycle they measure 52 inches on that I'm about five foot ten and a half something like that I'm gonna cut mine two inches longer just because of the seat I've got is different. I think it might need a little bit more room. This is all guesswork. The way I build these bikes is measure it up, guess, suck it and see, you know, backyard bodging. They work, but you know, nothing's really set in stone. I don't really have a plan. This could have over the seat steering. It could end up with under seat steering yet. We'll see what happens, <laughs> but I'm going to cut them two inches longer. As I say, the seat needs to be a bit more reclined with this seat. So I want a little, little bit more room. Also, the weight distribution. I want this for, for touring. It's not for racing or anything. I want quite a long wheelbase. You know, I want nice and steady. It's a touring bike. It's going to weigh it quite a lot, so it's not going to be a racer. So I've decided 54 inches is the measurement of the rails. Plus, I'm going to mount the, the dropouts differently, so you need a bit of extra room. You'll see that later on. What I've done, I've got the two pieces of steel in my chop saw, my metal chop saw. I've G-clamped them together. I've made sure the ends are dead square because you need these two rails exactly millimeter perfect. So I've clamped them together. I'll see if I can show you. Hang on. It's hard when you've got a tripod on the bottom. With this chop saw, I got it marked, I've got it clamped in. I've put G clamps on front and back just to hold everything nice and straight and uh, we're going to saw this and then we've got our two rails. That's the first step. That's a terrible cut. That's all over the shop. Never mind. I'll mark it and grind it. Get it nice and square. That's better. <coughs> nice and level. Pretty much. G 
check the other end. Uh, close enough. Close enough. So now I've got my two spars. Next step. Okay, we've got the rails cut, the main frame rails. Now I've laid them out on my welding table. I'll show you what I've done. I've drawn a line along the table with a sharpie. That's like my datum line. And I've measured the rear wheel hub and it's 127 millimeters. The spacing for the dropouts is 127. Now I've taken five mil off each side, made that 117 mil because the dropouts are going to be they're going to be flat on this bar here. They're going to go like that. So obviously I don't want to stick them to the side. I want to put them in the middle. So I've brought it in so that this is where they'll start. That's the mark. They'll start there and go slightly diagonal along there. Right, so that's that. I'm using this as a centre point. I've laid the frame out. And I've clamped it down. Trying to keep all the gaps equal to the front. And that is where that's going to go. So I've clamped them down. I've made marks all the way along in one foot intervals on the frame just to give me something to go by. So I'm going to tack weld this little bridge on. These are just temporary to hold it in place. And I'm going to tack weld that onto the back just to hold everything stiff. Then draw up my dropouts, cut and shape them, um, and then I can weld them onto there. Eventually this is going to be cut on an angle, tapered back a bit. So I'm going to start them about a centimetre or so in. And then I can cut this on an angle later on when I know what angle I want to cut it on and I can fill that in to keep the strength. I'll fill it in with a piece of plate, put a cap on it. That'll keep it strong. That'll hold it in position here. A couple of temporary welds. And we'll go from there, I think. Okay, rear dropouts. We've got a bit of older four mil thick steel plate there. And I've just drawn a quick thing for the rear dropouts. Need a 10 mil hole there and there. File it out. So you've got a 10 mil slot for the axles to go in and this is over length but you need around a two inch drop so that the chain when it goes it doesn't actually hit the chain stays. Plenty of clearance and um, also the frame's going to be on a bit of an angle if you've got a bit more, uh, bit more height on the dropouts it reduces the angle a bit but it's about clearance you know you can't have it too close if you add it there the chain would start to foul the back of the frame so you need about a two inch from the top of that hole you need about two inches of drop um, I'm going to cut these out make them the same file them nice and then when I mount them I'm probably going to put them on a bit of an angle so that they they hang vertically down from the frame but I don't know what that angle is yet you see so I'll uh, 
I'll work that out later but I've just got to cut these out now and I'll I'll give them a bit of an angle I'll tack them on and then you know it'll give me something to put the back wheel in when that's in I can measure how far up I need to put the brace in the frame obviously I don't want it too close it'll hit the wheel hit the tire so yeah I'll tack them on I'll cut them out I think tack them on give myself put the wheel in give myself a bit of clearance and actually cut a piece to go in a bridge let's say to go in so next thing cut these out make them look nice Right, <clears throat> there's your dropouts. Made, angled, filed, sanded, ready to go. But what I think I'll have to do is unclamp this from the table, move it all back this way so you've got a lot of overhang. Fix the wheel or a wheel and make sure it's all lined up dead centrally with this and then tack weld them on. That means I'll have to cut this off but that's okay. But basically to get it dead millimeter straight I need to put the wheel in and offer it up so if I move this so it's overhanging the bench should be within a, a good chance of doing it there right let's do that okay we've got the back wheel mounted in our dropouts there and we've put it onto the frame I've been measuring, measuring the gap there, 35 mil, 35 mil, so it is dead centre. There it is, look, dead central. Now it's time to tack weld those dropouts and see. We can, I'll have to keep checking it every time I put a little weld in I'll have to re-check everything because obviously when you're welding things move but I'll just put a tack either end of the dropout because that minimises movement so I'll put one there one there same on the other side and see what happens with that Okay, they are on. I think that's about exactly how I'm holding everything together. You can see why I've given it two inches, two inches of clearance there because where the cog is, you imagine the chain coming from from there you don't want it to be hitting this it doesn't want to hit this it wants to clear that cog so that's why we give it such a, a long dropout makes sense should be enough 
Next thing, these marks here. Those are where I want the cross piece to go. I I marked them out before before I clamped it down on the table. I had these two pieces clamped together perfectly symmetrical and I marked this with a T-square so I know that they are in the right place. It's hard to tell when it's on the angle, when it's all got that taper to it. So that's why I marked them beforehand. Now that should be perfectly square, that, that ruler at the moment, because it's to my marks. You don't want it on the on the piss really, do you? So next piece, get a piece of this, cut it, taper the ends, get it to fit nicely in there. And I'll probably drill a hole in the middle before I do that so that I can put a threaded bar through for the seat length adjustment or for anything else I might need. So I'll drill that before I put it in and then it's tack weld that in and then that's another bit done. All right, <coughs> that is the next piece. Drilled an eight mil hole in the middle, eight mil, taper the edges, fits in there, fits in there like that. It's a friction fit. Come on, get in position. Yeah, that should be about right. I mean, I've got all of this lined up again. This in position, you can see then. I can measure in here. Get my ruler, I can measure this. From the edge of the table, so I make sure it is where I want it to be. And then tap it in. And that's your bridge. So that's that. That's your dropouts. This has got to be cut on an angle sometime. Bridge is tacked in there. This is just clamped up. There you go. That's the first bit done. That's all I'm going to do tonight because I've got a curry coming. I'm going to relax with my girls. So that's the first part done. And we'll get on to the next part tomorrow, probably. See you later.